All right, guys, today we've got a 2005 Ford Ranger with a three liter. Client states that it's got a check engine light on. We have verified that. It actually does flash. Uh, we've already pulled codes. We've got a misfire code. We want to show you a few different ways to go after that. Let's get into it. All right, so we've already got answers on this vehicle, but we wanted to show you a couple of different ways to go after it. Um, we're going to go into the ignition system. We're going to do a relative compression test. We're going to do ignition system diagnosis, and then we're going to go into it with an in-cylinder pressure transducer. So we're going to get we're going to get three ways of determining why this engine's misfiring. So come on in. Let's show you the, the uh, check engine light was on, is on. We've got P304, PO304, and then we got a 316. So we've got a misfire. It's saying on cylinder number four. So let's find out uh, what's causing this thing. Let's go some couple of different ways of doing it. So the first thing we're going to do is we want to see is this engine mechanically sound? Does this engine uh, have a compression issue or anything going on with that? So a real good thing about the um, about the e-scan is we can come in here, we can do a relative compression test. So all I did was I came into Sharpshooter, came into compression. I'm going to go to start test. All right, so this engine uh, has actually got a clear flood mode, so we can actually, all we have to do is hold the throttle all the way to the floor and it won't start. Go ahead. Okay, we'll save the data. All right, so we definitely have got a low cylinder, no question. So right now we know this, this engine has got a mechanical issue. What is the mechanical issue? We don't know that yet. We could have a ring issue. We could have um, a valve issue, an intake valve, an exhaust valve, who knows? So we want to determine, now we could stop right now and tell the client, you got an internal engine problem, you know, and, and we can move on with our lives. Uh, most people want to know kind of what's rolling on with the inside the engine. So let's get into a way of doing it. First thing we're going to do is with ignition. So we're going to look at an ignition pattern and we're going to, uh, I'm going to show you how you can look at an ignition pattern and see what's going on. I don't want to give you what's wrong with it yet, but what's going on inside that cylinder. So let me get the ignition software up and get some um, pickup coils put on and then we'll go from there. Okay, so I've got the, the e-scope pulled up. I want to show you guys how to get into the engine analyzer on the ignition analyzer. If we come in here, if we come right down here, we're going to pull up the ignition analyzer. All right, so now this is going to get set up and we're going to be able to put. Now we do have, um, we do have automotive test solutions pickup coils. These are actually from Joe, Joe's Auto Electric. These are, these are really good pickup coils. Um, I like them both. I like, uh, I like ATS's and I also like Joe's. Uh, you know, if you want some, these are these are a little less expensive. So if you want to give Joe a call or give him a, a message him on Facebook, he'll, he'll sell these things to you. These are really good. So I'm going to go ahead and put them on the on the wires. And um, once I get them all on the wires, then we'll go ahead and get a pattern up here, and we'll show you what's going on with it. All right, so we've got all those hooked up. We're gonna go ahead and set the scope up now. So we've got all of all the ECOPs marked here. So this is uh, ATS's terminology for their, their pickup coils. We've inverted, since this is a DIS system, so this fires in a loop. It fires out one plug, through the plug, out one plug wire, through the plug, through the cylinder block, back the other way, and comes back around to here. So three of them have to be inverted, otherwise they'll be upside down. So. I can show you that real quick. See a red one's got to be inverted. So if we see it right here, if we, if we do that, we see that we don't, we don't have, it's upside down, it's, it's down here. Bring it back, now you can see it. So that's what that's, we'll make sure we got to set that up right. So let's get all these turned on. So right now it looks like a big old mess. So let's go in here and let's determine what's wrong with this thing. So let's turn them all off. Let's do them one at a time. 
So here's yellow. Let's go ahead and take it off of idle. Let's, so this is a multi-strike system. So hold on one second, Chris. Let me tell you. The multi-strike system is it Ford uses this. So this is two strikes on that ignition at idle. Some of them you'll see three. Uh, that's actually a pretty good way to check coils on Ford sometimes. We'll have to get into that when we get one in. But right now this is striking twice at idle. We're going to take it a little bit off of idle, which is going to make that multi-strike go away, and we're going to look at just one, one strike. So go ahead, let's take a little bit off idle. Right there. All right, so that's perfect. Now we're a little bit off idle. Now let's look at this right here. We got a nice smooth line. We're looking at this right here. This is in the cylinder. We know we have an in-cylinder problem. This is what we're looking at is this, this firing line right here. That's the spark duration and that's what we're looking at. That one's pretty smooth. Bring it up a little bit. You lose it. There you go. That one's moving around a little bit more. That's got a little hash. We're seeing this hash right over here. See that little hash in it right, right in here. So that little bit of hash at the end, that's in the cylinder. That's an in-cylinder problem. So let's keep going though. That's not our misfire cylinder. Green. You're good. That's, that's pretty good right there. I don't see a whole lot going on. Blue. Pretty good there. That, that's smooth. There's our white. Yep. Looks pretty good. And there's our misfire. We see a lot of hash. A lot of hash in here. So, especially if we're looking from about halfway in that firing line to this side, that's in the cylinder, and that's all the hash right there. So, this is an indication that there's a problem inside that cylinder. So let's see if we can't put that on stack, and that way you can see it even better. Pick it up just a touch. We're going back. There you go. Perfect. So look at the difference. We see all of them are pretty smooth. Everything's pretty good. And then look at this guy. That's cylinder number four. And we can see all that jumping around. This is our misfire. So that's good, Chris. Let's go ahead and shut it off. All right, everybody, we're back. We've got our uh, in-cylinder pressure transducer setup all hooked up. But I want to say something real quick. Stay to the end because we're going to have a little, we're going to use a one-channel scope to look at our ignition waveform. And a lot of people are asking for, well, what if I don't have a big expensive scope? So we've got a, a very inexpensive scope that you can use and still look at a good pattern on an ignition waveform. So stay to the end to see that. Well, let's go ahead and get into our third way and the most in-depth way of determining what's wrong inside that cylinder. So, real quick recap. We've got low compression. We knew that from our relative compression test. We've got in-cylinder turbulence. We know that's being caused by a bad valve of something. You know, one of the valves is bad. Now we're gonna go into the cylinder and we're gonna determine what valve is bad. I don't want anybody to think that we would do all three of these tests on every single car. Once we determine it's got a bad valve, we're gonna stop. There's no sense spending the client's money to tell them exactly what valve is bad. But sometimes you can't tell from an ignition waveform or it's hard to get to or whatever. So sometimes in cylinder is the only way to go. So let's look and see what we've got. Let's walk this way. It is pouring down rain here. So hopefully the sound quality is good for you guys. So inside of our tailpipe, we've got a, tra a pressure transducer in here. This is, this is our, uh, uh, gonna pick up our exhaust, pul exhaust pulses. So here we've got our vacuum pressure uh, sensor. And all we are is connected into our intake manifold. Okay. We've got our in-cylinder pressure here. So that's just a, took a spark plug out, screwed it into the spark plug hole. We've got our, if you want to look down, we have our spark plug. We've got a... Uh, this little guy right here in place of the spark plug. I don't know if you can see that. Hang on, let's see if I can take the light down just a little bit. There you go. Okay, so that's in place of the spark plug. So, and we do have a clamp on the spark plug wire and that's gonna give us an ignition, uh, just an ignition strike so we can kind of know where that timing is. All right, so 
let's go ahead. We've got we've got our let's come in here. We've got our scope set up. So here is our 25 inches of water. That's our tailpipe sensor. Here's our pressure transducer for the uh, in cylinder. Here's our vacuum transducer, and then we just got a, a sink probe there. So we're gonna go ahead and have Chris jump in here. We're gonna go ahead and start this up. We've zeroed out the ones that need to be zeroed. That's all the pressure transducers are zeroed. And let it idle. Go ahead and give us a full throttle. Have a full throttle. You see it bounce back. And then we're gonna stop. All right. Great thing about the uh, automotive test solution scope is you can click this button on the top of the pen if you've got their their tablet and it actually starts and stops this so first thing we're going to do is we're going to save this data all right so let's go in and again like a lot of scope patterns you first get it on the screen what what is that showing us let's go in and let's take a look at what we got so each one of these is a piston coming up so let's go ahead and blow one up so I can show you guys exactly let's go ahead and I'm just gonna right off the bat for those of you that are not real familiar with this I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and do it like this all right so there's a top of our peak here putting the curse on the top of our peak over here mark the cam all right so here's our ignition strike. We're not really worried about that. And so we're gonna turn that off. But you can see that that ignition strike was just a little bit before top dead center. This is top dead center, okay? This is bottom dead center. This is top dead center. This is the piston up, piston down, piston up, piston down, piston up. Let me start over again. So let's look at this pattern here. For, uh, this is a great way of knowing when timing is off. Now, this is not a, this is not an engine with timing off on it right now, but you can definitely look at ex exhaust valve. This is exhaust valve opening here. And you can also look at intake valve opening here, and you can determine if the timing is off. That's a great tool to have rather than pulling some of these engines apart and, and looking at you know timing belt marks or timing chain marks. You can go in cylinder pressure, and you can tell if the timing's off on an engine. So, great tool to have. All right, so let's go ahead. How are we going to determine what what valves leaking in this? So let's go ahead and get our hand here, and I'm going to take this. We're going to look at this thing a little bit differently. I'm going to move this over, and we're going to blow up the bottoms here. Actually, I'm going to process this data. All I'm going to do is smooth the data out a little bit. Okay, so this is what we're looking at. This is our exhaust pocket. So this is the exhaust valve opening right here. This over here is our intake valve opening. Will you see that start moving up? That's the intake valve opening, okay? So let's focus on these two points. I'm gonna blow it up a little bit more. Get some real good definition here. All right, I can see right now that that exhaust valve is not seat properly. You see that big hump right here? You see that jag jaggedness right here? That exhaust valve did not open. Is that showing up on that really good? So. It is hard to see a little bit on there. Let me try blowing that up a little bit more. I'm gonna blow up this little bit more. Let me move it over and we'll blow it up a little bit more. Okay, that's, now, there you can see it. This is a bad valve. That, that valve is not seating. Let's move over. Here's our intake valve opening. Okay, we don't have anything to compare to yet. It looks okay. Here's our exhaust valve again. Jaggedy at the bottom. Look at that flat. Okay, not good. Come over here. Here's our intake. Looks pretty good to me. This one, eh, you know, still got a little bit of roughness to it, but, you know, I wouldn't call it bad on that one. You can definitely see the differences. This might be hard to see on the... Uh, on the on camera here, but this one is, this one looks the same every single time. We don't see a difference in that one. But look at this guy. Comes down, point, flat, and then goes up. This is a valve that did not seat properly. So what, all we have to do really is look at, as we're looking at this pattern, 
all I'm doing when I'm looking at these things is I'm just scrolling across and I'm just looking and I, and I do it, you know, I'm not doing it fast, but I mean, the way I'm going to do it in real life is I'm going to sit there and do that. Yeah, I see a little bit there. Okay. Uh, boom. Look at that guy. Let's blow that guy up. Look how bad that is. All I have to do is see that a few times and I know that the valve is not seating properly. So this is a great way to determine what valve's leaking. So now we know the exhaust valve's leaking. So we went from knowing it has low compression, but not knowing why, to knowing that it has, but that's just by doing a relative compression test, which is minutes, to doing an ignition analyzation, if you want to go that, that route, be able to determine that it is a valve that's causing the issue, um, to now knowing what valve it is. And we, nowhere do we have to go other than take, the, the furthest we went into this was taking a spark plug out of it. So think about how much work we used to do, you know, for, for the older guys we used to do back in the day to determine something like this. This was, you know, we were disassembling things to find this, you know, and pouring fluid in the, into the, into the uh, intake ports and the exhaust ports and watching once the head's off. I mean, you know, these, this technology is light years ahead of where we used to be just 10 or 10, 12 years ago. So uh, this is something to get into. This is definitely something that is a learning curve as far as a pressure transducer goes. The, the relative compression, that's an easy one to do. You can do that with the e-scan like on here. Uh, if you're interested, if you want us to show you how to do it, you can actually do it with just a, a simple scope. If you've got a snap on, a Vera, something like that with a scope built into it, we can do it straight off the battery and, and show you how to sync it and know exactly what cylinder it is. Uh, it literally takes minutes to do. If you're interested in that, leave us a comment below on that and we'll definitely do that video. So uh, definitely leave comments below on what videos you guys would like to see because we, we, we love making this content. So, uh, so this is how we're going to determine which valve it is. So now I want to go back. Let's go ahead and do our, um, uh, I'm going to go back. We're going to get this back together and I want to show you an inexpensive scope, how you can use that to uh, look at the ignition waveform and, uh, and determine wh which, which one is a, uh, got the problem or what the problem is inside the cylinder. Let's you, let you see that we can see the valve problem from an inexpensive scope. Let me get this back together. And uh, not just me, me and Chris are gonna put it back together. And then uh, we'll get the little scope hooked up to it and we'll show you how that goes. Okay, so here we have a U-scope from AES Wave, one channel. Um, this scope, I believe, goes for $199 for your basic scope with, a, with one lead and a couple, power, couple back probes things. And I think it goes for uh, 450, which will have the um, an ignition uh, pickup coil paddle. Um, which actually, if you look in one of our previous videos with Andy, he's got he's using that paddle on uh, on a Nissan, I believe, or an Infinity, looking at ignition patterns. So, uh, so you get that paddle and some other accessories with it. So uh, AES Way, they're great people, and um, just go up to AESWave.com and you can find it. So let's look at this, this inexpensive scope. All I've got is, I've got our one pickup coil, again, from Joe's Electric, sitting on here. Um, and we're looking at the pattern. Let me go ahead and set it down here. Go ahead, Chris, let's take it a little bit off idle. Let's get rid of that multi-strike. The multi-strike's over here. Obviously, we're dealing with a smaller screen. But if we look, you can see the hash starting at the end of this. A little more difficult to see on this one, but there it goes, right here. You got it right there. Bring it down just a little bit. Bring it down just a little bit. There you go. You can see it right in here. Every once in a while, just now, this this update rate is probably a little slower on this scope. I don't know what it is, but so it might take you a little more to look at it, but you will get the answer. So you might have to look at it a little longer. You might have to wait a little bit. Now, for other patterns, you can use this for lots of different stuff. Uh, crank sensor, cam sensor. I mean, obviously, you can't do a correlation on it, but you can pick up the sensor uh, signals on these. Um, for a one-channel scope, I mean, to get in the business, you know, get used to scoping, move around with some different settings and stuff, this is a great little tool to have. So, so for those of you, you know, that don't have the really expensive scopes, um, some way to get into it and get going with it, start looking at some patterns and then moving your way up. And this is still something that we pull out. I mean, I you know I pull it out every once in a while. I'm doing something really fast and I just want to 
you know, get a, get a pattern, I'll pull this thing out. So, um, so guys, that's a, that's three different ways, um, with a bonus, with a little, with an inexpensive one. So three different ways to determine, uh, one, you know, misfire in cylinder, you know, we have a low compression, uh, relative compression with the e-scan. We've got, uh, uh, ignition, uh, waveform analysis. Uh, to determine that it is a valve, you know, that's inside the cylinder causing the low compression. And then we've got the in-cylinder pressure transducer work that tells us exactly what valve it is. So, uh, obviously, again, we're not going to do all three on every car, but, uh, you know, we always want to have as much in our arsenal as we possibly can to determine the problem. So, again, we test, we don't guess. So, uh, and this is how, this is, you know, part of how we do it. So, so I hope you guys liked the video. Uh, so, uh, you know, definitely down below, let us know if you want to see something else, you know, what, what, what you guys want to see because we're interested in it. So, uh, thanks. All right, guys, hope you liked the video. We really do appreciate all of you that are subscribed. Uh, it does help the channel out. We're trying to grow this channel. We're trying to get as much information out as we possibly can. Um, if you did like the video, you know, please hit that subscribe button. If you're not already subscribed, hit that bell notification so you can get every time we post a video, you'll get notified. Um, give us a thumbs up on this video, hopefully, and definitely leave comments below on what you want to see. Or if you have any questions on something that we did, please leave a comment. We try to look at every single one of them, and, uh, and we, we'll try to get back to you. So we appreciate you guys.